computer. Boom. All right. Okay, gentlemen. This is a very general idea. I'm just teaching concepts here. So yeah, you can pick it apart as far as, well, technically that's not correct. Technically that's not correct. I'm not doing all that. This is just very general. You guys are just starting out. So this is to teach you some concepts. Later on, we'll define those concepts uh, closer. Closer to reality of what stuff really is and uh, go from there. So right now you can see I got my computer out here. I can do that because I'm a freaking electrician. And look, I got my Cat5 cable out here with an extension cord. So I'm freaking rocking and rolling. Anyway, I did that because electricity works a lot like water. So what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna use this water for a demonstration of how this works. Let's see here, get this adjusted. So you can see I've got the water right over there. That's the water bib where the water comes out of the building. Now we can consider that the same as like a breaker that comes out of your electrical panel. You know, it's where the feed for your electricity comes from. That's the feed where the water comes from. You can kind of you can kind of use the same thing, the same idea, the same general concept. Now, for that water to get from that water bib, clear out to right here in my hand, there has to be something to conduct that water out here. I mean, if I didn't have this water hose, I turned it on, the water just spill out over there. I need to get it all the way to here. So that's what this is. This is it's a wire. It goes on the breaker goes on the breaker and that conducts your electricity all the way to where you need it. It's the same concept, okay? So water hose is gonna conduct water. Um, electricity is going to conduct, I mean, a, a wire is gonna conduct electricity. This is why they call it a conductor. So this is the very first term that I want you to learn is a conductor that is the term and now a conductor is anything that conducts electricity there's two common conductors used in electrical construction is copper and aluminum all right that's really all you use granted if you get into computers and stuff they use silver and gold yada 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 my point is copper and aluminum are conductors about anything metal anything metal is a conductor so Let me get this gentleman in here. Anything that conducts electricity is considered a conductor, okay? So just like this hose conducts water, you know, a wire, an electrical wire conducts electricity. And wire is made out of copper or aluminum. So those are two things you're gonna need to know for your Thursday quiz. Now, right now, well, before we get onto that, let's go to our second term, it's an insulator. Now, if this hose didn't, wasn't like hollow and wrapped in, in uh, rubber here, it, the water would be squirting out everywhere. So the same thing, if you notice your wire, you got copper on the inside, copper right there, and then it's wrapped in plastic. It's the same concept. Your electricity runs through the conductor, the metal part of it, and this plastic part is an, called an insulator, and it keeps electricity from going other places. If it accidentally touches, if it touches something else metal, you don't have this plastic, that electricity is gonna take off and go somewhere wherever it wants. Path of least resistance is gonna go. Your, I mean, water conducts electricity. You're made of, like 98% water or something. So if you touch that wire, then guess what? You're gonna be a conductor and you're gonna conduct electricity and that's not good. So again, so we have conductor, anything that conducts electricity and an insulator, anything that does not conduct electricity. Three common insulators, a plastic, rubber, or a glass. Glass is a good insulator. In fact, that's what they use on 
uh, a lot of these power poles and stuff, a ceramic glass. So you should know right now what a conductor is. A conductor is anything that conducts electricity and an insulator is anything that does not conduct electricity. It insulates, that's why they call it an insulator. The next term we're gonna go over is voltage, okay? So is the water on here? Well, we don't know that. So let's take this off and find out if there's any pressure in here, okay? So I'm taking this off right here. Look, ain't no water, ain't no pressure, and nothing, okay? The way, the only way this water is gonna flow out of here is with pressure, okay? You need some pressure. So just like you would turn this breaker on at your electrical panel, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna turn this water faucet on that way. And I'm gonna have this end is gonna be turned off and that way we're gonna pressurize this hose, okay? We're gonna put pressure in this hose. Oh, food, huh? What's up, we're going to... Now I'm recording the deal right now. I'll get some later. Okay, gentlemen, we have pressurized this hose. You can see by the water leaking out. Okay, make sure I don't get all over the computer. So, I'm missing the rubber gasket in the end of this thing. The point is, is there's pressure in there, but there's no, aside from the leak, there's no water flowing except what's leaking. So, anyway. So it is it's pressurized. It's just like if you turn a breaker on, it goes out on the wire, but you got this switch turned off, okay? Your switch, you got it turned off. That electricity doesn't run anywhere. It's just pressure. So you can think of electricity in terms of water, like water pressure in this hose. It really isn't doing nothing. It's just there electrical pressure or a bunch of electrons built up in a wire that aren't going anywhere, that's voltage. Now, so voltage is a term of electrical, you can just consider it electrical pressure, okay? So voltage is electrical pressure, just like water pressure. It's like electrons, they're wanting to go somewhere, there ain't no place to go. Now, so, now you measure uh, how much pressure, like if you wanted to measure how much pressure in here, you get a, a meter, you know, uh, a little dial or a measure of pounds per square inch. Just the same thing. And most, uh, most plumbing is like somewhere between 30 and 60 PSI pounds per square inch. Just like electricity in your house is 120 volts, 240 volts. You go to some of the bigger industrial places are gonna have 277, 480 volts. You get eight out here on the power lines, you're gonna have 12,000 volts. So my point is, is electricity comes in different electrical pressures, just like water pressure. Just, you know, your typical house is a low pressure. Then they, they, bump the, they can bump up the pressure up to do different things. Like if you had a pressure washer washing your car, it has a pump on there and it builds that pressure up. So just think of uh, electricity, voltage in terms of electrical pressure, okay? So now we ask voltage. So the next thing you're gonna wanna know, well, let's review here real quick. We got a conductor, this hose is conducting the water out here, just like a wire conducts electricity, okay? We got the rubber coating just like you have a rubber coating or a plastic coating on a on a wire it keeps that water in there this keeps your electrons or electricity in the wire okay you have pressure built up in here as soon as you turn a breaker on you're going to have pressure built up in the wire that doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere if all your switches are off or there's no load connected 
So you should know what a conductor is. You should know what an insulator is. And now you should know what voltage is. Those are three things. Number four is going to be this right here. Look what happens here. Okay. Now, what we have right here is we have water flow. All right. So we have actual water flowing out of the hose. Now there's still pressure in here. That's what's pushing the water out. All right. But water flow is measured not in pounds per square inch, but how much is flowing. So if you wanted to know how much water was flowing here, for instance, you could put this in a, uh, turn it down a little bit. You could put this in a one gallon jug and time it. And let's say it took a minute for it to fill up the one gallon jug. This is actually more than that, but you would say you were flowing one gallon per minute. Okay. So you have water flow and then you have a measurement of water flow, which should be gallons per minute. Now with electricity, it's the same thing. You've got an elect electron flow. You've got electrons that are flowing just like this water is flowing. And that's called current. Okay, so you have current flowing. It's just, it's a, this is electrons flowing, but you don't know how much. So if you want to measure that, you have to measure that. It's measured in amperage. It measures how many electrons go by one point in one second. Okay, I won't confuse you with the formula because this is just general basic of trying to get the concepts in your head. So just like you would measure how much water this is flowing, would give you gallons per minute, which is GPI or GPM, gallons per minute. Amperage will tell you if you measure how many electrons are flowing by a on a, in a wire per second, that will give you a measurement of uh, electron flow or electricity flow, and it'll give you a measurement of current, all right? So you just gotta remember that current is flow Amperage is a measurement of how much is flowing. So now, let's, let's review this real quick. You have a conductor, just like this hose conducting water, a wire conducts electricity. You got an insulator, just like this plastic, keeps this water in the hose. You got a plastic around a wire, or a number of other things. I'm trying to keep it simple. A plastic around a wire so that insulates it so you have a conductor and you have an insulator those two terms you should know if you have pressure built up in here which you do which right now is pushing the water out electrical pressure is considered voltage just called voltage how much pressure is in there all right the next thing is flow if you have flow if you have electricity flowing that is called current if you want to measure how much is flowing that is called amperage. A lot of people use those, interchange those two words, because they kind of mean the same thing, but they, they technically they don't. One is just flow, and one is a measurement of the flow. So the last thing I want to show you guys real quick before the end of class here is, is if you want to, I'm, I'm trying to set you up so you guys can understand Ohm's law when we get there. So. Voltage, amperage, and resistance is the last thing. Those, those three things is, is all you need for Ohm's Law, basic Ohm's Law. So I'm going to put some resistance to this water flow right here by squeezing this right here. I'm going to squeeze this, squeeze this down. And you can see, as I squeeze it down, we get less and less and less flow, okay? This would be considered resistance. Anything that resists current flow, like I'm resisting the flow right now in this water, is called resistance, all right? So I am resisting the current flow by squeezing this down. I'm, I'm resisting it. I'm 
choking it down. So resistance is anything that resists current flow, like I'm doing right now. It's the same thing with a wire. Anything that resists the flow of current in a wire is called resistance. Now resistance is measured in ohms, okay? Um, ohms will tell you how much resistance is there and they have a meter and it'll tell you like if it has a little bit of resistance, you know, if it has a little bit of resistance, that's a little bit. And this is a lot more resistance right here. The more resistance this has, the less current flow you're gonna have, okay? Unless you raise the pressure, which should be raising your voltage. But the point is, is this is the more resistance you have, the less current flow. The less resistance you have, the more current flow. I might have just said that backwards. The more resistance, the less current flow. Less resistance, more current flow. Works the same way with electricity. So, so gentlemen, to, to wrap this up, I wanted to make this short. Let's, let's recap. You have a conductor, anything that conducts electricity. You have an insulator, anything that insulates from electricity. Examples of conductors in the electrical field is copper and aluminum. Those are what most wires are made out of. Insulators are some kind of a plastic, rubber, or glass. Those are common insulators used in the construction field. So a conductor, anything that conducts electricity. Insulator, anything that does not conduct electricity. Conductors are made out of copper and aluminum. Insulators, plastic, rubber, glass, okay? That's just the common stuff. Now, you have electrical pressure that builds up in a wire, okay? It's packed full of electrons. Electrical pressure is voltage. So voltage considered electrical pressure, how much pressure there is wanting to get out. Houses, 120, 240. Industrial and commercial, 277, 480, stuff out on the poles. We up 12,000 up to a million volts on those big giant steel poles. You know, those ones that are, I forget what you call them right now. Um, so you have a conductor, you have an insulator, you have voltage, which is how much pressure, and then you have current flow. Current flow is just saying it's just saying that is electrons moving in the wire. If there's electrons traveling from here to here, this wire has current flow. But you don't know how much. All you know is it has current flow. Electrons are flowing. It's just like that water flowing in the hose from here to here. You know there's water flow, but you don't know how much till you measure it. So when you measure it, you measure how many electrons go by this point in a second. And that is measured in amperage, okay? So if you wanna know how many amps something is drawing, that is a measurement of how many electrons are flowing past a certain point, you know, for one second. So then the resistance to that um, flow is measured in ohms. So you could put a resistor on here, you could use smaller wire, you could do a lot of stuff. The point is anything that resists that flow kind of slows it down, chokes it off, is measured in ohms, okay? So one last time, conductor, anything that conducts electricity, insulator, anything that does not conduct electricity, voltage is electrical pressure, current is electrical flow, amperage is a measurement of that electrical flow, resistance, anything that resists electrical flow, and ohms is a measurement of that resistance, how much resistance is there resisting. So that's it. You know those things, you'll be good. Let me stop this recording right here. And I'm out here in the sunshine and I can't find my pick and mouse. There it is. Adios, amigos.